Welcome to Fight Waves. Audio Journeys by Kung Fu Academic. Be mindful about what you do. And this is, if you don't have the competition, then you don't really have the, you don't really have the, the need. You don't have the, the urgency to make sure that you are training, you know, in the most effective way. Hi guys, welcome at the next episode of Fight Waves. I know I took some break, but I have been working really hard on my new online coaching program. So um, if you are a martial arts fan or if you are into movement or if you are into fitness and you would like to be coached by me, then I offer this premium um, online coaching program that comes not only with uh, Kung Fu content where you learn techniques and forms, but also with uh, strength and conditioning, perhaps mobility routines, and then some other things such as educated videos about Kung Fu and, uh, and China, um, almost daily check-ins, one-on-one calls, group calls, and also very specific exercises for the Kung Fu part. So there is no endless repetitions or drilling of techniques until you are bored or until failure, but really specific exercises that are based on modern coaching methods to help you get the best outcome, the most possible uh, performance and stay motivated at the same time. So if you are interested to learn more, make sure to uh, message me on my social media or my email. You can find everything on my website or on Instagram, Facebook. Just search for Kung Fu Academic and I'll get back to you. All right, so today I want to talk about why I competed or why I compete, even though I spend most of my life in traditional martial arts. Because lots of people, they are, you know, not very much for the competitions. They are against it. And uh, for me, it was always very important. And now when I'm older, I see why. And I can't really imagine going through all the training years. It's been a long time for me, over 20 years, without actually competing. The reason is because with competitions, you get to program your training and you get to really make sure that you are reaching the best possible outcome, the performance in the shortest time and really think and be mindful about what you do. And this is, if you don't have the competition, then you don't really have the, you don't really have the, the need you don't have the, the urgency to make sure that you are training, you know, in the most effective way. Because it doesn't really matter if you are just, you know, training for yourself to, you know, become better today or in five years, kind of. But once you try for the first time, what does it mean to be using a well-designed program for your training then there is no uh, there is no going back from that because the feeling of yourself getting getting better and at the same time feeling better like feeling stronger feeling faster but like really feeling like physically well and emotionally well is just so good and this also comes with you know breaks so one of the problem I had before I really learned more about programming and tapering. Uh, like an athletic performance training was that um, there is not really like a, the idea of taking breaks or having, you know, low season because there is no high season and low season in traditional martial arts in karate or in kung fu where I competed in. There is just like, you know, you train hard because you train to become a better person, a better um, practitioner. But it's still like some kind of like physical, um, physical training and the stress, and you need to give your your body and mind time to recover. So it's important to also make sure that there are peaks, but also that there are like 
low seasons, let's call it, even though you are not competing. So for me, what I learned is even though people who are not competing, there should be training with like well-designed program for several reasons. One of them is to make sure that they are having the most effective training to really get to the level they want to be in the shortest time using the best methods, the best methods for them, for their bodies and their issues they are having. And at the same time, to stay motivated because there is nothing worse than keeping, keep training and there is no end goal, which is why competitions are so great because you have some kind of goal in your mind, some kind of a, a time urgency and you know, okay, after this one, I can rest a little bit. So it gives kind of like a different perspective to your training. And I think it's very useful, especially for people who don't compete, because otherwise they don't have this kind of cycles and they are, uh, they can be very beneficial to, for them to, to uh, experience them for the first time. I have been uh, competing my entire life. So basically... When I was a teenager, there was no, you know, drinking or partying. I was not really interested into that. I was always preparing for some kind of competition. Was it like a national championship, European championship or the world championship? In karate, I didn't really reach uh, high. I think the highest one for me was a nomination to the European championship, which then uh, my club decided that I won't go to. It was in Kumite fighting that it wasn't safe for me. I was a kid that time, you know. And then when I switched to Kung Fu, I started competing in Taolu uh, forms. And I forgot for several years that I'm a fighter. But luckily, one day I visited a training camp in Thailand and there I remember who I am, which is another story. So uh, I spent most of my my years training for some kind of performance, like a, a competition. And I know there are lots of people who are saying, oh, you know, traditional martial arts, they are for, you know, um, getting better as a person. You shouldn't be competing. This is not a sport. And that's all right. It's just that, that kind of training where you have a goal, you have a time frame, um, and you know what, what, what you are supposed to do, what the methods are is really beneficial both uh, skill-wise and also emotionally or mentally. So I totally respect people who say that competing is not for traditional martial arts. I think for me, it was a really good thing to do. And I loved my competition uh, years. So it's very like, a, you know, individual opinion, which is fine. So I competed... Um, I uh, got to the national team in Kung Fu and for several years I was actually living in Hong Kong while I was still on the national team. So I went to my Sifu's gym to train there a few times per, per week, but otherwise I basically made my own gym in, uh, in the park just next to my, next to the building where I had my apartment. So I usually train there at night, so I scared a few grannies maybe who were like sitting there on the benches and then I came with a broadsword and a stick and started train Kung Fu there. But then eventually, you know, they, they got to know me and remember me. So, but that was usually my, my time after, after work, I would go to the park with weapons and then I would, I would do my training. I have lots of good memories about the, the, the competitions abroad, like Europeans and most of the world championship, because the world championship in traditional wushu or kung fu by International Wushu Federation was always in China at like different places. So I, I have, uh, I could see like several like mountain regions, which was very cool. I remember one day we always like stayed in the same hotel, all the all the teams and depending like how, how big the hotel was, right? So maybe it was like few of them, but in one hotel, you always had like several countries. 
So we would meet at the same dining area. And one day they were like, uh, they brought uh, fish heads. And we were just standing there and we're like, okay, where, where is the where is the rest of the rest of the fish? Actually, my Sifu he really like uh, he, he really likes fish heads. He loves to eat that. That's his favorite meal. Not really for me, <laughs> I guess. I can I can pass. Yes, yeah, so uh, I have been in the national team for several years, but uh, I have always you know been competing and wanted to be on the team which was a bit difficult when I was still uh, competing in karate because I was in one gym. And then I switched to another, which was not keen on having their people to compete. And that time my, my sensei, my, my coach, told me like, okay, if you want to compete, then uh, go and host for, for, some other, for some other gym. I don't mind. So that time I was maybe 14. I maybe had a... Maybe 13. I, had, I think I had a blue belt or, yeah, maybe blue belt or green belt. So I was a, I was a, I was a teenager. I was a little girl. And so I came to this, to this gym that was open to have me as a, like a hosting athlete. I uh, explained to them the situation and they were like, okay, yeah, come have a, have a, have a trial training with us and we will see. So I did, and I remember I was trying so hard to impress them. So they were like, we were doing some push-ups, and I was like, oh, you know, I need to, I need to look strong. So I was doing push-ups on the knuckles, which now kind of like, now I'm like, wow, for like a surging 14-year-old girl, I think I was quite tough. And then there was some, uh, um, there was some kumita like uh, sparring. So I remember I was really trying very hard to to punch and kick everyone to make a good impression. And eventually it didn't work out, but then I found my way to competing. And uh, when I was 18, then I started with Kung Fu and then took my career, sport career, another way. But uh, I definitely think back at these years with, with love. I think it's very important for us now because we have so many obligations, we have so many things to do, so many roles to obtain. We need to be, I don't know, uh, businesswoman, businessmen. We need to be parents. We need to be children. We need to be good friends. We need to, um, I don't know, we have some side hustles or lots of like other roles and um responsibilities that we have that it's really um, important more than ever to be efficient with everything what we do so it bring us results that we can see to stay motivated so before it was okay to you know just keep doing everything keep keep doing some kind of skill over and over and see where it where it takes us and see the improvement over the years but now I don't know, maybe you can say that things are faster and lots of people would argue that that's a bad thing. But it's just, it is what it is. And I guess I'm just trying to say that even if you don't compete, it's important to know, to have a plan, to know what you want to achieve, how, how, how fast, what's your time frame and how you're going to do it and why is it important for you. And that after that, you can take a little bit of break so you can recharge, so you don't, you don't, you don't get to burn out mentally and overtrain physically, maybe get injured. Even though you are just, you know, training as a, as a hobby, it's not your, you are not an athlete, that's fine, but it will take you to entire different level. And when you see it, when you feel it for the first time, you'll be like, okay, I like this. It makes me feel really good. So I guess I can leave with this thought and I will see you or you can hear me <laughs> next time. And meanwhile, you can uh, contact me anytime through my website. I also have a newsletter and I have uh, some bunch of free stuff now. I have a free training session that you can get from me. Also have some other content that is free. So reach out and I'm happy to share with you. See you next time. Bye.